when you want to transcribe audio through OpenAI's Whisper model, there are two options that you can look at. Given the model is open source, the first option that you can try out is you can download the model locally in your system and make inferences through that model. The second option is that you can use Whisper's API to get inferences by uploading the audio file. So these are the two major options that you have. In today's video, what I aim to show you is a small benchmarking analysis, whether you should kind of download the model locally or should you use the API that's readily available. So without wasting any further time, let's kickstart the activity. Let us kickstart the activity by having our installs in place. So I'll require the OpenAI module as well as the Whisper module. So let me go forward and make the installations happen. While the installation is happening, I'm currently using Google Collab on a T4 GPU. So I've already enabled a GPU. If you wish to make inferences from a Whisper module using a CPU, the inference time will be really high, which is where I would advise you to use a GPU. So this is something that I wanted to specify at the start of the video itself. Now that our installation is up and running, let's go forward and import the necessary modules. So I'll require Whisper, OpenAI and OS module. So I'll quickly run the cell to import these in memory. So the imports are in place. Now I'll kind of start transcribing audio using a function. So I'll quickly unhide the cell. And here is the function that kind of uses the Whisper's model locally and transcribes the audio. So I won't go into the details of every line. I've already covered this in my previous videos. So here, basically what I do is I define the language as English. I define a variable called as audio, which loads the audio. Then if there is some amount of padding or trimming that I require in the audio, I kind of achieve that using the pad underscore or underscore trim function. Then I convert the audio into log mail spectrogram. So think of it as frequency distributions. Now, once I have the audio converted into spectrograms or frequency distributions, that is passed through the Whisper model. The Whisper model is basically a combination of encoder and decoder. The frequency distributions pass through the encoder section and you get the output text, which is the transcribed text as the output in the decoder section. So when I call the whisper.decode function, I'll get the result of the text that generated based on the audio. The audio again was passed as a log mail spectrogram. Okay. Now the result will be part of result.text, which I return as a variable called as result underscore text. So this is like a small summary of the entire function. So what I'll do is I'll quickly run this particular piece of code so that I import this particular function in memory. I'm currently using a T4 GPU on a Google Collab session. So I have decent amount of memory with me. And what I intend to do is I want to show you how the overall inferences happen for different versions of the Whisper model. So you have different sizes of the model. So you have a tiny model, a base model, a small model and a medium model as well as a large model. Okay. In the parameters column, you will basically see the total amount of parameters that are present in those particular models. So the tiny model has currently 39 million parameters. The base model has 74 million and so on and so forth. As you keep going down from tiny to large, the overall inference time will increase because the size of the models are increasing. How much does it increase is what I'll show you first. Okay. So let's kickstart the activity with our tiny model, which has close to 39 million parameters. So I'll quickly unhide the cell. I already have a recorded file called as file3.wav, which I've saved into a variable called as file underscore name. Just for reference, here is the file. I already uploaded the file when I created this particular Google Collab session. So I'll quickly unhide this particular section now. So I'll quickly run this to load this particular file location into this particular variable, which is file underscore name. So I'll quickly run this. What I do next is I create a variable called as tiny underscore model and I load the model tiny into this particular variable. So I'll quickly run this cell while the model is downloading tiny underscore model devices will return if I'm using a GPU or a CPU. So let's wait for the download to happen. So as you can clearly see, it's a 72 megabyte file. So this is the size of the model that's being downloaded. 
So the model is up and running and the model is basically using the GPU, which is what is inferred from this particular output. Okay. Now in order to infer the time taken by the tiny model to make the inference, I'm using the function that I've just created previously. I'll pass in the tiny model as the input model, which basically references to the audio file that we've just created. So let's see the overall time taken. So this is the transcription. Hello everyone, my name is Bhavej Bhatt. So it's kind of goofed up my spelling a bit. But here is the overall time. So if I just look at the wall time, it is around 290 milliseconds, which is something that's kind of acceptable. But I'm using a tiny model as I keep increasing the model size. So will the overall time taken for the entire inference will increase. Based on what I remember, the wall time is basically once you submit the code to the CPU, the overall time taken in the execution of the entire process and once the process is completed, the entire time once it's measured, it's, it's basically the wall time. Let's now move to the base model. Let me now unhide this particular cell. I'll follow the same steps that I followed for the tiny model. So I'll quickly run this. The model size of the base is twice as big as the tiny model. Now if I call the transcribe function, the overall time is 381 milliseconds, which is greater as compared to the 290 milliseconds that are there. So there is a slight increase like a 1.5 times increase in terms of the overall time taken. If I and if you look at the prediction as well, it's kind of got some part correct now. So Previously, the T was missing and the spelling was wrong. The first name was kind of a bit off. Here it's got my last name correct and there is some issue with my first name. So this is how the overall response is. Now I'll do the same activity for the small model and let's see the overall time taken as well. So if I quickly run this. The size of the small model is three times the size of the previous model that we looked at, which is our which is our base model. So the model has been downloaded. Let's do the benchmarking analysis. Here the overall time taken is 875 milliseconds as opposed to 381 milliseconds. So the small model takes twice the time as the base model, which is what we are seeing here. But in terms of the accuracy, the base model has nailed the accuracy. It's given me the exact name and the surname as well as the entire audio that I had kind of uploaded. Every word is correctly spelled out, which is the beauty of using the small model as opposed to the base or the tiny model. So uh, this is where the sweet spot lies. If you're kind of building an application, uh, you have to pick a model which is not very small, but not very large as well. So here is where you can have that uh, sweet spot in terms of deciding the model as well. Now I'll choose a bigger model. So I'll go to the medium model. I'll perform the same benchmarking activity. The size of the medium model is almost four times the size of the small model. So which is where it's taking good amount of time to download the model itself. Now I'll carry out the benchmarking activity. So I'll quickly run the cell. So the overall time taken is 1.9 seconds. So approximately two seconds is the overall time taken by the medium model. And if you compare it to my previous model, it took less than a second, but here it's taking almost two seconds. The output is perfectly accurate, but the overall time has kind of increased because there are more amount of multiplications that are happening, which is where you see the time difference as well. Now I'll carry out the activity with the largest model that we have, which is the large model. So I'll quickly run this. The size of the large model is exactly twice the size of my medium model. So it's basically a step up in the accuracy, which is where the large model will be the most accurate model, but it all depends on what you're trying to transcribe as well. So let's wait for the model to download entirely. So we have the model with us. Let me now go forward and carry out the benchmarking analysis for our largest model. So let me quickly run the cell. So the output after the small model has remained mostly a constant. And here is the final output, which is hello everyone. My name is Bhavesh Bhatt. 
and the overall time taken is around 3.55 seconds which is still decent enough given that it's a large model it's still very quick in terms of the inference but if you're doing like a online real time prediction then i don't think large model along with t4 will make a lot of sense again you'll have to take a call in terms of what you feel is right for your use case while transcribing audio so this is something that i wanted to show you now the next piece that i'll show you in this particular video is what if you start using whispers api to make an inference okay so this is something that i want to show you right now I've kind of borrowed this image from Whisper's website. So there is only one model that is available currently, which is Whisper-1. So we have the open source models, right? We have tiny, medium, large. So the largest model that is available, which is the open source version, is the same that is available as Whisper-1 through the API. So now I'll kind of run the entire activity of transcribing this particular audio file using the API now. Let me now go forward and do some benchmarking activity. Okay, let's move forward. So this is the simple function called as generate underscore text. So I have a variable called as model underscore ID, which is where I'm referencing the whisper one model. Then I open the media file. I pass it through the audio dot transcribe function. That is a part of the open AI's library. And I get a response inside the response there will be a key value pair and one of the keys will be text which is where my actual transcription lies so i'll quickly run this particular cell to import this in memory so i'll quickly do this now that i have the function in memory i'll quickly go forward and i'll run this cell the overall time is 955 milliseconds given that i'm considering only the wall time I, I have the output here, which is hello everyone. My name is Bhavesh Bhatt. This is in line to all the accurate responses that I've received. Also the wall time is in line with the small model. So if I go up here, if I run this on a T4 and with the small model, it takes around 875 milliseconds. This is in line with what is generated using the API. Now here you have to keep in mind that there are latencies that come in with respect to network calls. But if you just look at the CPU times, the system time and the overall time taken for the entire execution to happen, this is much quicker as compared to any of the versions that you see here. So here the overall CPU times are 1.92 seconds, 1.42 seconds, 673 milliseconds, 261 milliseconds, and finally here you have 179 milliseconds. So, so in this video, I wanted to highlight the overall time taken for the different sets of executions that are happening using OpenAI's Whisper model. Either you can run it locally or you can use their API. If latency is something that is of paramount importance, then you can have your own GPU instance. So you basically have to take a call in terms of the costing as well as the latency, which is where I thought this video will kind of give you an idea in terms of how various models of Whisper perform and how the API performs in terms of timing as well. I hope you found this video informative. If you do like the content that I post on my channel, it would be super motivating if you can press the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to be notified for amazing videos on data science and machine learning. Thank you so much for watching the video.